Hey guys, March 28th. One second here, please. One second, we'll be ready to go. All right. So we have a ton to go over here. Good morning, everybody. Getting a little more coffee, getting set up. Going to be a fun day. So let's just start with the obvious, in my opinion. And I just want to focus on the indexes first, and then we'll get into it. So what we're going to do is just clean up these moving averages. And I want to focus on the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ has been leading. And I just want to point out what's been really very obvious. Okay. But if you look here on the NASDAQ, all right, you're going to see this level right in here. Now we've been seeing this level for some time as a battleground, the demarcation line. It's okay. So you're at that 12, eight, 12, eight, 52. Let's just call it 12, eight, five. So you're sitting right in there. Bonk, 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 right? You can see that level. It's not rocket science, guys, right? So support and resistance are working like a charm. Um, I'd watch last night's video. If you have not watched last night's video, make sure you watch it. So I, I get into some detail. We're about to get into some of that detail. We get into it way more in last night's video. So make sure you watch it if you have time. I'm trying to cut the... Uh, daily videos down to like 20, 25 minutes. I know we like the longer format. I just think it's getting to, it's a lot for people after work. Point that I'm getting at with these levels is what you're doing, you're testing support, right? Now, what do you, what would you call this, right? You're coming down and now you have one, two, so you kind of have a flagpole there, don't you, right? If you really look at that, what do you have? You have a flagpole on what, okay? under resistance. So then if you were so inclined to look at that, what would you have there, right? Um, and you can just kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you can see that level right there, right? Okay. Let's drop this down here for a moment because you can see all the wicks down here, right? So you know what you need to hold today, right? You can already tell what area that you need to hold today, right? Let's just go, let me show you this before I get into the other part. So this is the area that's the battleground right now, okay? This is minor support. All these wicks over here, wicks are price rejection. So far, they have not been holding. But that's pre, it's pre-market, so we have to ask ourselves, do we care? Yeah, I, I mean, I kind of care. So I want to watch that. I always want to watch that. And I'm focused on the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ has been the leader. Nothing else has been the leader. The NASDAQ has. And get rid of this for a moment and pull you back up into the middle of the chart. But... If you look at this, it looks real simple, right? But let me just point something out to you that I think that you should be paying attention to. These patterns, they're everywhere right now, guys. So if you look just right here, and I'm going to clone this just to make life easy, always clone your lines, okay? Always clone your lines. Look how they fit perfectly, right? That line fit perfectly right in there. So I have a bear flag on resistance and I break, okay? Okay. Now, at the same time this is happening, I want to be real clear about this. I'm buying Netflix into this, and I'm doing well with it because Netflix had the highest resistance or the highest relative strength of the day, right? That's fine. The minute you start seeing these things kind of crack, even your tech names, you have to start looking at them and going, okay, I need to, I need to pay attention here. It's unrealistic to think that the NASDAQ is going to come in and your name is going to go higher, Right. So it's always index sector stock, index sector stock, right? That's always how you want to look, right? You'll have outliers and you've got some really cool outliers today, but just watch this, watch this 1285 and then watch this level right here because this is your demarcation line in the day. If you start taking this level out, which is 12769 and you start Getting back down here, you take out that pre-market low of 12.75. This could be ugly. Now, this morning, we have some statements coming out from McCarthy, uh, the Speaker of the House, saying that everything's fine and we're through the worst of the financial crisis. Um, I'm just going to point some things out that are very, very obvious to people that are seasoned traders. This didn't trade like something that everything's fine. In other words... 
all we did was get to the pre-market high twice, get unable to break that pre-market high, and then take out the what? The pre-market low, right? So you always want to know where your pre-market high and your pre-market low are from every single name. You always want to know where they are because you could have people in there that are banging it around. And that's exactly what you have here. Now, you have your pre-market high, you have your pre-market low. So we know where we're at. But look at these anchored VWAPs and how you're anchored in here. Look how this morning you're hitting right in there and you can't break. So they're out with these statements saying, don't worry about the banks. The banks are fine. JP Morgan has a statement today where they're saying deposit rates are straight, but the deposit outflows are starting to accelerate again. Now, we're going to get into this. But before I do, okay, I've seen nothing. And I want to be real clear about this. I am short Deutsche Bank, so I don't want to make, you know, not say that I don't have a horse in this race. I have a horse in this race. I think Deutsche Bank's next. I think I don't think that they're a zero, but I think that they're going to have problems. And I think to think that they're not going to have problems is, is silly at this point. Um, what you need to focus on and you can't look at, right, because institutions make sure that you really can't trade CDSs, right? But, you know, only they can trade CDSs. Only they can buy the insurance. I mean, it's a very nice racket they made for themselves. And I'll use the word racket because that's exactly what it is. They just they keep retail out, which is kind of crazy, but they do. Unless you're very, very wealthy. So you can see these levels. Like if you have a like a pri if you're a private client like Goldman or J.P. Morgan, you can get access. But other than that, you're not gonna. It's not gonna happen. So anyway, see these levels right here. This is move. Now let's explain what move is. Move is the bond market option volatility index. Why am I showing you this? Because is this moving? I'm using the word move. Is this moving like something that's telling you you don't have a that you shouldn't be worried? No. If this was the VIX, our VIX in the stock market, and we saw a move like this, right? comes down, starts to go again, our antenna would be up. So bonds always know before stocks. Okay, So if you take nothing else from today, remember that one line that I just gave you, bonds always know before what? Stocks. Okay. Here you are breaking out right here, right? You're reversing. What What is the VIX doing? I go over this in yesterday's video. Please watch it if you have not. Uh, I can't hammer understanding this enough. So in other words, we're breaking higher highs on the bond market because they're out. And why does the VIX rally? Because they're buying puts. So they're buying insurance on bonds again, right? So they're buying. So just get walk, I'll walk you through it. Here's Thursday. Everything's fine. And now they're starting to spike again and buy more insurance. Meanwhile, the VIX is dropping. This, this makes zero sense if you look at this chart. They, are, they are mimic one another almost perfectly. And there's a reason why, because if bonds are doing well, then you're going to see stocks do well, right? So that's just the way it's been working. Now, if we get rid of this, just understand that that's something. So try not to laugh when he said that things are just, things are fine and the worst is behind us. Uh, traders don't believe that right now. Institutional traders do not believe the worst is behind us. You are watching people come out like large institutions telling their clients to fade rallies. So if you're getting information like that, and I'm, you know, I trade a little differently than everybody else that you probably watch or that, you know, my background's institution. So I pay attention to what the big guys are doing because that they, they're the ones that move the names. Here you are on the US two year and you can see your level here. Rates have peaked. That's it's no longer debatable. If you think rates haven't peaked, I'm just I'll be blunt. You're wrong. They have. Rates are peaked. OK, there's no way that we're going higher because they'll destroy the economy. Bill Gross had a whole article on this last night. Uh, I should find it and post it because what he was talking about was that you're in a position where they can't even raise rates because of the amount of debt that the government has right now. So I just want to point out what is obvious. Okay, Fed funds is 457. I covered this in Saturday's video, 4% right now. I, I borrow at Fed funds to go and buy bonds. I borrow at 460, 450 to go buy four percent to go get to go make four percent. Okay. And then rates are going to come down. And as rates come down, you know your mortgage is and it's going to be cheaper. Your personal loans are going to be cheaper. So where are these banks making this money? They're not, they're stuck. So 
no one really believes that I that that we've seen the worst of this. There's something else that's going to break, and that's the way that people are trading, uh, and that is candidly the way that these firms are leaning their their clientele right now, their higher end clientele, not you know not retail, of course. But let's just take a look at ES and see what's going on and see how this is going. So here we are in ES and I have this trend line and we just keep rocking and rolling and going higher, but you're starting to see a development up here, all right? And these kinds of developments I would pay attention to. So it's a mini head and shoulders. It's not a huge one, but it's there guys. It's there, right? And even if we use this level and say, you know, you still need to close below something in here. That's a left shoulder. It's a head to right shoulder, guys. Like it's it's sitting right there. Now, you can also make the argument that this is a bull flag. You would be right. But there is some, some issues here. Higher or lower high, lower high, lower high. So in other words, they're walking us down, right? And if we don't understand that we're being walked down, then we have a problem. Okay, so we're being walked down. We're watching the leaders not become leaders right now. I still think they're the names to buy, but watch this and pay attention to it. Uh, this is definitely something that is on my radar. If you start cracking 4,000 to get back and test this DTL 366 makes a lot of sense to me. That's one of the levels that we've been watching right here, 3966 right there. Been watching this level really closely. I guess it's down a little bit more and, uh, and come right across with it so you can see it. Not a lot of people are watching this one. So I'm not really sure why that this level's not in everybody's radar. But if you watch, everyone's at like 3950. For whatever reason, this level is something. And you can see it right in here, right? So we're going to pay attention to that because that's an important level for us. And that's really what I have as far as the indexes and where you need to be. You know, you buy down here at 4,000 with the hope that you're going to get through. You break 4,000, you need to get out of the way. And can you break 4,000? I, I, I think a retest and a flush of some kind would be best here. And the bond market's telling you, the bond market volatility index is telling you that that's going to happen. Now, before I take questions, I already know that I'll be asked about Tesla and NVIDIA. So here's what I'm going to tell you about Tesla, okay? We were watching this yesterday in the Alpha Chasers community. We're watching this thing move, right? And let me get rid of this arrow for a minute. Okay, so we're watching it move and we can, you know where you're going, you know where your resistance is, right? So you're not really chasing. If you can get through this, you can get to 208, but you got nowhere there. And let's, let's do this on a 15 so we can watch it play out a little bit better. And so you really got nowhere up here, right? So when you zoom in on these lines and you know where they are, you're looking at this going, do I really want to be that guy? And then, of course, you get this wonky bar down that smashes your hopes and dreams. Anyone else notice that the first 30 minutes are usually the inverse trend of how the rest of the day is going to go? Something you might want to pay attention to. So you can see how you crack right here, right? See that crack? And then boom. And then you gap fill which has been standard. You've been gap filling, presenting an opportunity to buy. You make a little money and you get out of the way. Okay. These kinds of tests of support I did all day yesterday. And I did quite well doing it. I would really focus on support and resistance. You're in a trader's market right now. You're not in a breakaway market. This is what's working. Okay. So you're still seeing accumulation, but watch that 190.40 today, because if you get back down there, it should hold. At the same time, you're going to want to watch this close right there where you're sitting right now, okay? And you're going to just want to make sure that you're holding there and then go from there. That's They're the big, big ones, right? Focus on the big names. They're the ones that are holding in here. They're the ones that are looking like they're going to shape up. Look at NVIDIA, right? So I love NVIDIA. I think it's a great, great idea. Uh, I thought AI would get more of a play, the AI names yesterday, but, you know, higher lo or lower high, lower high, lower high. Right? So I've got lower high after lower high after lower high. Um, we got stopped out of this. We had a real nice run in it. We got stopped out of it, but you can see your level here. And I bought it again yesterday, traded it out. That was it. Next, wash, rinse, repeat over and over again, right? That's all you're doing. 
My problem here with this is they're walking us down. I don't like being walked down, but that's what they're doing to me, right? That's what they're doing to me. I'd like to be, you know, sideways, but you have something going on here. And I don't like when I see this. I'm going to just point this out. See how this is your one angle? See how your angle is getting steeper? That usually doesn't bode well. So I need, I need to watch this. What I think we're setting up for is some kind of flush from some other bank. Okay, this idea that there's nothing wrong at First Republic, um, to me, is kind of laughable. Because if there was nothing wrong at this bank, right, if there's nothing wrong here, right, well, why aren't we back to $100? Why aren't we back to $50? Okay, we can't even get up off the ground, guys. So it's the, the, nobody wants to buy it. Nobody wants to do a secondary for them. Nobody wants to inject more capital into the company. So when you start to look at all this, it becomes increasingly clear that there's an issue here. And we just don't know how that issue fixes itself or writes itself yet. So keep that in mind. But I, I, have, a, you know, I have a bunch of names I can go over, but let's just take some questions and, and go from there. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Monica. Yeah, the banks that I would focus on more than anything, the banks that I think make the most sense of all the banks are the ones that the FDIC is stating that you can go out there and um, didn't get. Hold on one second. So. Let me just make sure of something. Stay with me one second, please. I'm sorry. I just want to make sure that this is out there. Um, hold on one second, please. Bear with me one second. Sorry about that. I forgot to drop the link somewhere. So... What banks would I focus on? Well, the only two banks that I would focus on, and I'm going to say this, just so you understand, Monica, you know, I, I, I believe in disclosure. So I'm short FRC. I'm short Deutsche Bank. I, I, I'm not doing really well with those shorts right now. They're just kind of bonking around. But I have to be honest, I don't have a care in the world. I own FAZ, right? I, I really am not even remotely worried about these trades. Because it's so clear to me in my head, right, and the way I work, that there's some other shoe out there and they're just not being honest with us. I, I've watched this happen so many times. So that's where my head is. Now, which ones would I buy? I'll tell you the, the only one that we're really looking at right now uh, is I'm looking at NYC Bay and I'm watching it hit this 200 day moving average over and over again, right there. Okay. And I like this bank. Now, I'm going to tell you why. This, until yesterday, was the only bank that was allowed to buy assets and liabilities. This was the only bank that was, that was allowed to buy assets and liabilities uh, up until yesterday. So that's really pivotal to me. And that's definitely something that I want to pay attention to. I want to understand um, you know, why that's happening. Why are they allowed to buy assets, right? And I know the reason behind it. I know why they're the ones that get to buy assets because they have the safest balance sheet, right? Then you go and you go FCNCA. Well, I mean, they just got the deal of a lifetime. Okay, they just got the absolute deal of a lifetime, this bank. Now you look at this bank. I was looking at this the other day. I've got a huge flag here, guys. Like winners win, losers lose. So this is becoming increasingly clear to me um, that you're going to see, you know, winners here. And the two that I would feel the safest with is if you're going to allow me to go out there and buy assets right now and increase my balance sheet, which they don't want anybody doing, right? So if you think about what it means when you buy assets from a bank, you're buying their deposits, which are deposits are liabilities to a bank, guys. It's not their money. It's your money. It's my money, right? So they're liabilities. 
So now you have liabilities and now you have these loans. So not only when you buy these assets, you're buying the loans, which are really your assets, right? They have to perform. The deposits need to stay or the asset line can't perform. And if, a, and if the FDIC, with what we're dealing with right now, is allowing you to buy a bank in this environment, you need to pay attention to those two names. They would be the only two uh, right now that would be of interest to me. Okay, Anything else, not so much. And the reason for that is because I don't know when the next shoe is going to drop. Now, I... I love JP Morgan and I think it makes sense. The problem I have is I think that they're, and I'm just playing this devil's advocate in my head. I have no way of knowing this. I think they're going to wind up buying assets or liabilities from FRC, but I think they're waiting for FRC to get worse. And I think I'm not the only one that thinks that. And I think that's why they're leaning on it. Now, if I had to go out and say, I want to gamble, which one would I buy? I'd buy Goldman because there's no way that Goldman hasn't positioned themselves for this by now. They're fully aware of it. They're seeing it. You're getting all these dojis down here. 305 has been holding. If I had to pick one that I think has beaten down, that's made it, that will make it, it's this. Other names that make a lot of sense that are very low on the risk scale, Monica, to me are like this uh, m and Bank, but it can't get up off the ground for some reason. So maybe I'm missing something, right? You're running right into a major um, resistance level here. Let me show you. And you have all this noise in here. And, it, you know, from that level, this range, and I can't get above it. So I, I may be missing something there. And so there might be something on the books there that we're just not paying attention to. The other one that seems like just completely oblivious uh, you know, you're only down 20%, which is nothing on a regional bank right now, is regionals and the fact that it's hanging in there. So they're the ones that I'm looking at. Um, the fact that this flushed and never flushed again right here, right? You flushed that day and you never flushed again. Uh, that's of interest, isn't it? Right. So that would be of interest to me. And I mean, candidly, it is of interest to me. So. Uh, they would be the ones that I would be looking at and they'd be the ones that I'd be paying attention to. So, you know, that's really what I would be doing with it. Um, I don't think I'd be doing anything, you know, anything more than that. Uh, I've had some positions, Monica, and I'm spending a lot of time on this because this is really important. Um, I, I had some positions in here. I got out of the way because I don't know what the next shoe is. But I think if you look at the bond market, like I just went over, I think it's silly to think that there's not another shoe and that these people are being honest with us. I just don't believe them. I've been around too long and I know how this goes. And then they'll come out with a statement saying, oh, well, we didn't know it was really that bad. You know, so just keep that in mind. Um, hope that helps, Monica. Happy Tuesday, Shuck. I would, I'll tell you what I'd be looking at with the index is exactly what we just went over, my friend. I, I wouldn't be going crazy here at all. I'd be just biding my time, watching how this is going to play itself out uh, and going from there. You know, these are the kinds of names that always move in this kind of environment. You know, people just want to buy yield and they want to buy safety. That's all they want to buy right now. Okay. And these kinds of names are obviously just going to keep grinding higher and higher. Anything like this will, right? You'll see even probably like Sam Adams is probably getting up off the ground. You know, I mean, no, not really, is it? So you're really seeing these names. I guess that was a bad example, but you're really seeing these names uh, come in here, right? And, and yeah, you're going to see rallying in these names. I don't know if Budweiser is the one that I would buy, but... Yeah. Could this go higher? Absolutely. This can go higher. 100% that can go higher. So yeah, it's definitely something that I would be paying attention to and uh, I'm focused on. So if we're looking at this and we're watching how we act, then that's definitely something that I want to pay attention to. Right. I would want to pay attention to it. If you're running and you're, and you're setting up here, I'd want to pay attention to it. That I, I get that. Hershey's makes sense. CL, 
uh, CL does well when they drop the rates, right? So when they drop the oil costs, it does well. Okay. I don't see anything redeeming about that. Hershey's will be great. People will just buy Hershey's. Everyone's like, oh, they're going, they're going woke. Or look, look at this chart. No one cares. Everyone, everyone loves chocolate. Period. Right. So this is all it's going to do. And you come through and you look at the earnings over and over again. I mean, it's like it's night and day, guys. I mean, it's every single time. Right. Every single time. So. I mean, it's very hard to be except the pandemic. So, I, I mean, this is just it's a no brainer. If you had the park capital while you're watching this all settle down, it's names like Hershey's and. Why this is so pivotal is if you start looking at these little levels that are like here, right? And you start really drilling into it, like that's pretty clear that you're breaking out. It's pretty clear that you had a huge flag here. Uh, and then you form this, you know, what I'll refer to almost as a dragonfly break out of that dragonfly, goes sideways, never take out that low, and then boom, lift off. There's nothing to do here except hold it. Absolutely nothing to do with that name. Uh, except hold it. So keep that in mind. Okay. It's definitely something that I'd be paying attention to. Certainly. Anything like that right now is going to work, right? Anything like that right now to me uh, is going to work. And they're the names that I would definitely be uh, focused on more than anything. Okay. Um, I would not be in a situation here where I would not put myself in a situation here where I would be betting against staples right now. I'm trying to forget the best way to say it. I think that's the best way to say it. I would not be betting against the staples right now. I, I just would not. I think you're going to see a flight to safety to some extent until this settles down. Um, I'd rather them just rip the Band-Aid off except pretending, you know, it's very difficult for me when you're going to pretend that everything's fine and you have a stock that's down 95%, right? And But everything's fine at the bank, but nobody wants to buy it. Like, it's just, you're ju they're just not being honest, okay? When, even, even this rally that you got in Deutsche Bank, well, if it, everything was so great, why, didn't, why aren't we having follow through, right? So you kind of have to look at what's going on. Okay. And, you know, watch the movement. You're seeing the market try to break 4,000 right now. So those kinds of names, what I'd be looking at as I, I bought gold yesterday, I'm up another dollar in it. I mean, it's working out pretty well. Um, I would be watching those kinds of names, the Cloroxes of the world, the Colgates. Um, I think this is telling you and telegraphing exactly what's going to happen here. So uh, staples, staples, staples. Actually, I put out a newsletter uh, today. Make sure you get the newsletter link in description where I go over, you know, what the changes that I'm seeing in the market. What's up, Russell? S-E, Oxy. Yep. So Oxy, I just think eventually he's going to take it. He's going to take it out. Right. Um, let's do Oxy. And uh I can't, I don't think I'm gonna have time to do all of them because I have a lot to go through here. Um, pretty obvious what's going on here, guys. You know, you get down to a level and then all of a sudden, miraculously, you get this buyer. You can see where that buyer is really very clearly. Uh, if everybody wants to see it, I'll just show you. Okay. Every single time that you're under that 56, 55, 56 level, you get a buyer. I mean, it's and his buyer, the name of the buyer is Warren Buffett. And eventually, he's just going to take the company private. I mean, that's the goal, most likely, is just take it private. Keep all the income, have the, have the company throw off the income, keep all the income to himself, and then go buy more companies. Pardon me. That's his MO, and that's what he's going to do here. He's just going to buy companies. And that's all he's doing is he's buying companies with cash from the companies you know, from the other cash flow, he's buying more cash flow. That's all he's doing. He's just very, very good at it. All right. And he's just constantly trying to figure out how to increase the cash flow of those companies. But you can see that right here. And this is pretty, pretty impressive. Right. I mean, you know exactly by looking at that where your stop is and where you should be in at. I don't see any reason 
uh, for that, you know, to, to look at that. Jacob, I do want to cover your SE because they did have really good news. Um, they did have really good uh, news, and uh, I'd like to cover that the more I'm looking at it. So, yeah, I see this, and I, I, I do like this. Um, I, I thought the earnings were really good, and I think the stock did very well when the earnings came back. Couldn't even retest the low, re recap. I'll tell you what I like about this is that I've got this inside day right here where you're looking at the high 81.48. If you come over here, you made it by a little bit, like 10, 20% or 10, 20 cents, but you're still in there. So I know people are going to say, no, it's not a real inside day. Okay, I understand it's not a real inside day, but it is because the body's inside that body and the body's inside the other body, right? I'm not interested so much in where you reject. I'm more interested in where the body is. See, like this body's out of that body, right? So that means I'm probably going to have a problem, right? Just the way that it works. It's the way that I look at it. So that's why I like candlesticks so much. They tell you a story. Uh, but to me, that looks like it's about ready to rip. And now I'm going to make a higher high. So I don't know. It's very tough for me to tell you to buy tech right here as I'm watching the, the market come in. And I think it's going to come in a little bit harder. Um, but that said, I do understand your, your interest in that name. And I do like that chart, Jacob. And I didn't want to, uh, think that, you know, it's cause I didn't cover it that I didn't like it. What's up, Timo? Thank you, Timo. I'm having a great time doing this. Please share this. The more people we get in here. What's up, Russell? The better. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. anyone see monster stock drop like an elevator? You said drop is your news. Do, 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 do. You know, I got to be honest. I don't even have Monster on my. If it did drop like that, um, I don't even have it on my list. So did it split? Well, maybe it's split, dude. I think your stock split, brother. <laughs> I think you have a stock split on your hands, my friend. I don't think anything else really wacky happened. Let's take a look, but I'm pretty sure that that's a stock split. So I think you can uh, sleep sleep well. Uh, yeah, you have a, you got yourself an old fashioned stock split. That'll wake you up in the morning, won't it? So uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't look past that. Well, crisis avoided. So we've got that one fixed. What, and what was the other one that we need to pay attention to? Uh. DraftKings, ITB, and let's do let's do te, uh, let's do Apple because I think Apple's important, and we'll do ITB too. So, ITB, okay. Let's go through a couple things here because I I think this is one of the most misunderstood sectors out there right now, and I'll explain what I mean by that. I don't see how you could look at this name. And go on the assumption or the sector and go on the assumption that they're going to have problems. So when you go through a recession or anything like that, people put money into their homes. It's just what they do because it's safe. They have a hard asset. They have a roof over their head. They buy houses. You have the rental market right now, which is extremely hot to go get anything to rent. It's extremely difficult to rent if you're in, especially if you're in a big city. So that's the second part of the equation that is people really need to pay attention to. The third part for me is understanding that people are not going to sell their homes because they've got 3% mortgage rates. Something like 50% of all mortgages right now are 3% or under, something insane like that. So those people are never selling their house because they could never get as much house again for the money until rates come down. And then you have a supply where you have five, we're short 5.8 million houses, right? We're at the 1960s level for houses right now. And, you, and you're competing against uh, private equity to buy a house right now. So to say that there is limited supply and massive demand in home construction is an understatement. It's just going to take time for people to get this and for it to work itself out. And it's already had a decent move. I had a really nice trade in Toll Brothers because it was trading at book value. And that's really where you buy these. 
But this is setting up again. We got in down here and then blew it out into the, the move. But if I look at this, this is setting up again. And I, I absolutely think these things are going to go through another peak cycle where they're trading a two times book again. You know, I, I could absolutely see this get back to like 90 bucks or something like that. It wouldn't surprise me in the least to see it do that or even make new highs to be ca absolutely candid with you. Um, it really would not be overly surprising for me to see that for this to take out that high. It wouldn't shock me in the least. So I like I like those names longer term for sure. Uh, Apple, I want to go through. I don't know that FRC is going to survive without going to. I don't know that FRC is going to survive. I really don't. I'm not saying they're they're not, right? But I mean, yep. So you buy Philip Morris. Uh, let's do Amazon and let's do Coin. So if we take a look at Amazon here, there's very little to say, right? My biggest issue with Amazon here is that it is the majority of the consumer discretionary and consumer discretionary starting to get weak. I like it. As long as you're holding here, I think you're okay. The moment you start cracking that level that I've drawn here and you start taking out the low of this flag, I'd be concerned and that would get me out of the way. That would, that would be my red flag there. Um, and I also don't know that I want to be buying stocks that are below, uh, go from there. But let's just see. Yes, it will. Right. The banks will be trying to lock in these higher rates, so increasing them as the bank will cost them loan opportunities. Yes, 100%. So uh, Baba splitting Mark into six different companies. I would look at Baba. Lulu, let's do Lulu. Uh, morning, MSTR short. I, you know, I, I've got this theory, um, uh, my conspiracy hat, and then I'll do Lulu. Here's my theory. I, I actually think that, that they might get like a Wells notice or something. I see the government getting increasingly aggressive with crypto, like massively aggressive. Yeah, all these problems at coin, when you started to read them, they sound awful about them creating these coins and everything else, right? Why are you doing this now? Why are you going after the Binance guy now? I personally think you're doing it because our, our particular banking industry has some massive issues here. And I think that's why they're doing it to scare people out of crypto. What was the alert this week? Red alert, SEC, don't buy crypto, crypto scams. Where, where were you a year, year and a half ago? But now we're seeing that. I mean, it's kind of a joke when you really look at it. That scares me about this company because are they going to come out and say, you didn't disclose that you were doing this or that, and then they're embroiled in something. You know, you just never, you never know. And so that scares me a little bit with them because it's a possibility. It's a slim possibility, but it's a possibility that you have to assign like a five or 10% to. I'm holding the 200. I like the company. He gets it. I think it's a much better place. So if someone asked about coin earlier, I would not be buying coin here. If you read, if you really read what happened there with the coins, the stable coins that their employees were creating and dumping onto the exchange, and then they were washing themselves, that is some... Um, that's some scary stuff that they could run into uh, some litigation issues with massive litigation issues as a company and uh, stuff that you don't come back from. So huge regulatory issues there. So I, I don't know, you know, uh, we were talking about it when it was running up and I, I don't know that I'd be playing those. I think the way to do this for me that makes the most sense is to buy Bitcoin. If you want to buy Bitcoin, if you want to buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. Now, some people are looking at this. I'm just going to walk you through. I, know I saw one trader pointing this out, right? Everybody loves these diamond patterns. Um, so I'm just going to point it out to you because I don't think he's wrong. It's there, right? You're going from here to here, right? So, and then I saw this and I don't know that I fully agree with it, but I'm just going to show you what I say. 
right? Or how he had it. He had something like this, right? And so he's got this wonky diamond up here, and now you're out of the diamond. Uh, okay, maybe, right? Maybe. But to me, I still have a flag. And this has not done anything like that that would let me think that I don't have a flag. Let's get rid of all this. This would do nothing that would let me think that I still don't have a, a bull flag. I don't have the prettiest bull flag. I keep testing the low of the bull flag. I can't break above the high of the bull flag, right? We're seeing the wicks, right? So I've been up there five times. I can't get through, right? So I'm not saying it's the prettiest looking chart. It certainly is not. It's actually getting weaker. If you look inside the flag itself, right? All of a sudden you were green, green, green. Now your last five bars, red, flat, green, can't make the higher high, red, red. It's not what you want to see. And look at the volume. Your volume's falling off a cliff. So something's going on there. But I, if I was to trade something like that, I'd be trading Bitcoin in and of itself and take that risk. What's up, Steve? I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. All right. Same reason we're poking fun at China. U.S. dollar doing it. Well, look at Kenya, Sonny. Look at Kenya's study. Look at Kenya's look at what Kenya's statement yesterday about get out of the dollar. So, well, I don't buy through coin, but you can buy it other ways. Uh, OSW. Um, it's it's out there. It's it's out there. It's on the it's on the internet. Damien asking about that article. If you, if you just Google, you'll find it. I don't know. I wouldn't go near this. Where's my volume? My volume's falling off a cliff, Steve. Falling off a cliff. At least get over these earnings or over a higher high before I get involved, Steve. Unless you think it's an equity, unless, you know, there's something fundamental you know about it, but I, I don't see it. I really like the fact that I outline these in black. It makes life so much easier when you just want to look at a chart and turn it into a open, high, low, close real quick. So, all right. I got to jump, guys. If you need anything, reach out as always. Stay safe out there, and we'll go from there. Spence, I covered in the video earlier. Have a good day, everyone.